Time now for our Wall Street Week daily segment with the host of Wall Street Week, David Weston, who joins us every day. Uh, and David, of course, I think, what are we, about 30 or so hours away yeah. from a U.S. government shutdown? It looks like that's where we're headed. And we talked to Rashir Sharma of Rockefeller International. He'd been talking about how much fiscal stimulus is still in the system, the money we've borrowed to make that work. But then I wanted to ask him, what about those people in Congress who are sort of getting fed up with all the money spending and are going to shut down the, the government? This is what he said. This is an actual shutdown. Obviously, sort of, it begins to detract from growth. But... I think that so far most people think that the impact will be rather modest and the worst will be averted. But every week that, that we have the shutdown, it will obviously have an impact. The issue here is that no one is doing this on any great principled way, which is the fact that as we have discussed in the past, that if you look at the last 50 years, the U.S. has run a budget deficit practically every year in the last 50 years, no matter if you've had a Republican or a Democrat president or whoever has been in in Congress. And that's what's happened, that because for 50 years we have run these deficits, the attitude has come to be of policymakers that deficits don't matter. That you can keep running deficits, there's been no apparent adverse effect of this, so why should we care? And now what's happened is that they've taken deficit spending to a totally different level, which is that in the past the U.S. would run a budget deficit of, let's say, around 3% of GDP for much of the last 10, 20 years. That was in line with what other developed countries were running. Now the U.S. budget deficit is projected to be 6% of GDP a year for the foreseeable future, twice as high as what the U.S. was running and way higher than what the other countries are currently running. So the question now becomes that this is leading to much higher interest payments. It's leading to a much higher debt load. I think the U.S. now public debt as a share of its economy is behind only Japan and Italy. So when does this begin to really matter? And when do the bond markets and international investors say enough is enough? And one of the changes has been the interest rate. Uh, if you go back two years, four years, five years, we were told by policymakers, don't worry so much about the deficit. It doesn't really matter, as you say, because interest rates are essentially zero or very close to it. They're not zero anymore. So what does that start to do about uh, U.S. expenditures and our budget if we have to have that large a debt service? I think at some point in time, it's going to start to impair other spending, including social spending, that because this cost is going to go up and up, right? That's what the bond market is currently pricing in, that we're going to have rates for higher for much longer. So at some point in time, then that begins to eat up a significant part of the uh, total budget. And if you look at the cross-sectional evidence of what happened in other countries, once interest payments as a share of uh, the total uh, budget exceed a particular amount, then the pressure comes on to cut social programs. As I said, the central question here is this. When do international investors say enough is enough and they stop funding this kind of deficit? We haven't quite reached the point as yet because the dollar uh, is still relatively strong. But at some point in time, I think we could reach that point and that's when it really begins to count as far as the U.S. is concerned that you can't run budget deficits of 6% of GDP every year and have a current account deficit, you know, which is 3 or 4% of GDP a year. A, a twin deficit of 10% of GDP a year, at some point in time, maybe much sooner than we think, that will begin to count. Rishi, there's a follow-on question, I think, to when do investors stop funding the deficit, which is if they're not putting the money into U.S. Treasuries, where are they putting the money? If you look around the world right now, some prospects, such as China, for example, does not seem to be as attractive a place for foreign direct investment. So where does the money go if it doesn't come into U.S. Treasuries? Well, that's what's really uh, helping the U.S., that it continues to be perceived as the best house in a bad neighborhood, right? Because you've got, uh, in terms of... Uh, China in trouble, Europe, the perennial uh, problem child of the global economy. <laughs> like, it's the first country to sort of enter a recession, possibly even in this cycle. Uh, so I think that the, uh, you're seeing some other signs of life in other places, like Japan is doing you know, much better. It's you know, done much better this year. I think some of the emerging markets outside of China have done relatively well. Uh, these include places like India, include places like Indonesia, Mexico, Brazil, and even some places in Eastern Europe, like Greece uh, <laughs> and even Poland. These countries have done well. Still relatively small to absorb too much capital, but you can see that this sort of new era is beginning. It takes a while uh, you know, for this to happen, but I think that the 
that there will be a time, uh, pretty, I think, soon this decade, when you'll see a much better environment for international investing because the dollar stops appreciating. Currently, the dollar keeps reacting to the fact that yields are going higher. So it's like, OK, we must bid the dollar higher. Having said that, it's, very, it's quite interesting that even though the perception is that the dollar is appreciating, compared to the increase in yields that's taken place, the dollar hasn't gone up that much this time. The dollar is still well below the highs it hit in September, October of last year, if you look at the DXY. Uh, so that's a sort of interesting subtlety, I think, which is lost in this debate here, that the dollar is not doing as well as would have been implied by uh, the increase in 10-year yields here.